and welcome to Let's Go Speaks. Today is Friday, August 20th, September 20th, and this is a bonus episode. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. So if you're looking for a regular episode with chit chat, what I'm working on, etc., this is not it. Um, this is a bonus episode that I do monthly, thanks to folks who support the show via either PayPal, Ko-Fi, or Patreon donations. So if you'd like to find out more about how you can be one of those amazing humans that we're all sending love to right now, then you can check um, on YouTube down below and I'll have a link to all of my squirrel stuff. So like the shop, Ko-Fi, PayPal, no, not PayPal, but Ko-Fi, which is kind of, it's just run off PayPal and um, Patreon and what have you. So thank you so much. Okay, so this week, this month, today, things right now, I'm having the chai because as I said, September 20th, we are nearing the autumnal equinox. It would be great if it could feel like autumn, but trying to practice balance, reminding myself. I'm very excited because this is kind of like the tipping point into my season that I enjoy the most. I actually, the older I get, the more excited I get about longer nights, hunkering down, I'm not a spring cleaning gal, I'm a fall cleaning gal. Like, I need to organize, I've reorganized the workroom down here. I need to reorganize our storage. <laughs> it's in the eaves of our house upstairs. And then I will feel like I can move into the season with like an open, <laughs> an open heart. Um, but yeah, so I hope you're all having a good equinox. whether it be going into cool weather or warm weather. Gus is having a snooze, so hopefully he will be chill. Um, so this episode is going to be all about hand spun. So last time I did a little bit of like an intro to spinning in terms of like an intro into my spinning, like what I do and what have you. Um, and so, and I get the question a lot of like, well, what do you use your hand spun to knit with? Because I don't constantly knit with my hand spun, but I do have quite a few projects amassed. So I thought I would do an episode about knitting with hand spun, or it's not really about knitting with hand spun, but just showcasing some patterns that I have knit using hand spun. Um, and then, so what I'll do is I'll kind of do it in three parts. I'll do like a things I have knit in hand spun, and then I'll move into like things that I think are good for hand spun. So patterns I think would be really well suited to hand spun, and that I have seen knit in hand spun. And then the final part of the episode will be um, finding Ravelry inspiration for hand spun. So if you're not as comfortable with doing slightly more advanced searches on Ravelry in terms of like how to just not only look at perhaps, so for example, say uh, I'm gonna show you a foolproof, well, in, in process. Um, Cal, and you're like, oh, I like that, but I would like to know what it would look like in hand spun. I'll show you both how to find, filter that out on Ravelry. I'm sure most of you know how, but again, if you didn't even know it was there, you didn't know to look for it. Um, but then I'll also show you how to just get generalized inspiration. So just to look on Ravelry at all the hand spun projects, because sometimes I find that very helpful just when I'm just like kind of at a loss. Um, or even just when I'm not planning on knitting, but planning on spinning just to have inspiration. So So first part, things I have knit with hand spun. So I'm going to start, I, the full disclosure, this is not all of the Id projects I have ever made with hand spun. I've gifted a lot of my hand spun projects. Um, and also there are a few that I did not, I'm not going to show because they were gifts to me. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what the pattern was. So while I did try to research, I didn't think to ask ahead of time the person who made it for me. Um, so I did try to like ferret out what it was, but I just couldn't find the information. So full disclosure. And now that I say that, there it is. Okay. Whew. Nope. That's it. That's it. Okay. So first I'm going to talk about, well, mostly what I'm going to talk about is accessories. So the first things that I'm going to talk about are hats. Then I'll move into cowls and shawls and then bigger shawls. And then I have just one sweater project to show you. Um, but whatever. We'll get into it. Okay. Okay. So the first hat I want to show you is this is the Quinn Q U Y N N by Wooly Wormhead. And so this was knit for my kiddo. I actually, um, 
I have trouble with my pom-pom staying on well, so I did a giant button that was actually a gift from SSK. It was an Acreworks button. Um, but it's a big old button to um, fasten on the pom-pom, and that pom-pom has held on so well. Because what I actually did is, we have traditionally gone to our zoo's, like, Winter Lights Festival, because uh, she is a Capricorn baby. And so, for, like, her birthday-ish celebration for family. Um, and so I had actually put some of those little, like, LED drop lights or whatever. They're like the really tiny ones that are on a wire that some folks course bin with. Um, so I had actually wrapped those into the pom-pom so I knew it needed more support than normal. Um, so, but I really do like having that button on there. But so again, that's the Quinn by Wooly Wormhead and it's a super cute little ear flap incorporated hat and it looks great in hand spun. I kind of think hats are a cooler option for hand spun. And then, okay, so then I have a Ricky hat. And this is one of my, the Ricky hat in general is one of my all-time favorites. I apologize, I should have actually told you what the, um, I should have written down what the gauge for everything was, or like the suggested yarn weight. Um, I almost, have, most of my projects are a sport or DK. Um, so I'd say that's probably what this is. It might be worsted, but it looks pretty itty. The stitches look fairly small. Um, this is a Ricky, which is written for DK, and that is a hat by, it's R-I-K-K-E, by Sarah Young, which is fun and hand spun. I wear this quite a lot in the winter. And I, you know, people kind of go back and forth over whether they prefer garter or stockinette in Hand spun, I really do like garter and hand spun quite a bit. It, actually, it just accentuates the squishiness of it and just makes it really great. So then I have, this is the one I needed to look up because this is the one I just remembered like, oh yeah, duh, until I have that one. So this is the sock head hat. I apologize for not being completely prepared. I am, however, a human doing my human things, which sometimes make me less than perfect. Okay, they always make me less than perfect. Okay, Kelly McClure. <laughs> it's the sock head sock hat. And this is fingering weight. And this was hands one that was gifted to me by Knit Spin Farm because she is super <laughs> amazing. So this hand spun is what she does. She calls it three ply two ways, I think. She does like half of her bump as a chain ply so that you get like the more solid colors and then she does half of her bump as a traditional three ply and that's where you get the morally kind of barber pulling and then she makes amazing striped socks out of them oh my gosh crazy gorgeous this was so precious and delicate and ethereal that I was afraid to put it on my hulky hobbit claw feet and so I really <laughs> I, it's like that the, the like dilemma between like honoring what the intention of the item was and then like just being afraid of your own oafishness <laughs> so I've made it into a hat which I really love so again the sock head hat is fingering weight and it is got a nice fold over brim I love non-ribbed brims, so either garter stitch in like the Ricky or um, a folded stockinette brim because I tend to wear my hats all day and so it does not irritate my forehead and I don't have bangs or anything. So it doesn't irritate my forehead as much as ribbing does. And then if you're feeling super crazy. <laughs> so this is the... Brio Garter Hat by Stephen West. And if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember if it's Aaron or Bulky. This is definitely Bulky. But it might be written for Aaron. And so this is the first brioche project I'm showing you. And so the fourth, on this side, the main color is the hand spun. And then the recessive color is um, eco wool. So Cascade Eco Wool. And so this is the inside out. So there you get the more subtle rainbow on the inside. Um, and so this hat is made to either wear 
And this hat is clearly meant to be worn like this. Or, <laughs> if you're not that fancy, you can fold it down a little slouchy and wear it like that. Or, if you are going sled riding in the Arctic tundra, you can flip it up and have super warm ears because you get double, it's like quadruple layer bulky weight yarn, right? Like it is, you're good. You're good to go. Like ski, do all of your outside events. So that's the Brio Garter hat by Stephen West. I've also knit and I should have written it down. I've knit another one of his brioche hats, um, and I knit like three of them for friends, but I didn't knit one for myself. But anyway, so brioche is, I love brioche with hand spun. Um, for one thing, it's often a good way to stretch hand spun because you're using it in, con I use it in conjunction usually with a commercial yarn, um, but that's just my, because I tend to want to stretch the hand spun usage. And so, um, Garter is a or brioche is a great way to do that, and I have a couple other projects to show you that are that way as well. And then this is the I, calorimetry. I'm always terrible at saying these things. So this is, I believe, a worsted weight pattern, right? Am I crazy about that? Oh, and this, I'm sorry, it's by Catherine Schundorf. So this pattern has been around forever on Ravelry, and it's a super wide headband. <laughs> with, if you're me, stone buttons. And now I'm like suddenly thinking, did I actually make this or was this a gift? I, I, did I? Now I'm almost thinking this was a gift, but I think I made it. But maybe this was gift yarn. Maybe that's why I think it was a gift. I'm really awful. I bet this was gift yarn. Anyway. <laughs> So this is chain plied. Everything else I've shown you, except for the socket hat, which again, I told you is the three ply two ways, um, has just been traditional two ply. So I should remember to tell you what things are as well. But this is chain plied. And so your colors um, have a little bit more tendency to stripe. Isn't that beautiful? And what I did is I think this yarn was actually a little bit heavier than was suggested in the pattern. And so while I didn't really full it, like fully full it, I did shock it. I did put it in hot water and then cold water just to get it to like tighten up just a little bit um, because it was ha I was having a tendency, it was having a tendency to stretch out. Um, but so now it's perfect. And again, great to keep your ears warm if you have a bun or a clip because you're me and you live in the 90s still. What are you gonna do? So lucky to have those. Okay, so then hands. These are the only, somehow these are the only hand things. I have hand spun mittens for sure, um, but I think they have like cycled through to gifts to other people because they were for Tova and they got too big or she got too big or what have you or something else. But so these are actually Nucks. So K N U C K S. And that is a DK pattern um, written by Pamela Grossman. And these are hand spun chain ply. So you can see that they have, the colors are pretty much staying stripey. And then I, I was afraid I was a little bit short. These are for my husband. He has very big hands, like ham hands. Um, so I did throw in some like contrasting um, mill spun yarn just to kind of make sure I had, was gonna have enough because these are knit from here up. Um, so I made sure I had enough and I totally did. So yeah. <laughs> so those are those. And then, okay, now, okay, we'll do Gus's. Well, it was all those. Um, I've also knit some, this is a dog sweater in hand spun. Some of you could be like, what? Not only is it handspun, it's brioche. <laughs> but handspun is a great option when you need something that's real, or handspun and then also brioche are great options for when you need something warm. For me, I tend to do my handspun fairly woolen, which tends to, it traps more air in the yarn. And since air is our great insulator, um, it helps to insulate quite a bit. 
And so then of course, if you add another strand of something with it, even more so. So this is just a little plain dog sweater. I think I just used, I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd write it down, but I think I just used like one of the formula patterns. Um, it, and it was not written for brioche. I just, I pretty much just winged it. Um, so there's that. <laughs> but again, if you just have like one skein of a hand spun, the commercial yarn will stretch it for brioche. And then if your dog is, is thick, is finicky and she wants, um, she wants two sweaters in the shape of one, then, you know, you can reverse out Jane Joe. And there you have it with a commercial spun as the main color. Then we're going to move into the category of accessories, neck, torso. Let's talk about cowls first. So this cowl was a gift um, to me by Knit Spin Farm. And so this is her hand spun and the white is actually from her sheep. So this is the Brain Freeze, but Freeze is spelled F-R-I-E-Z-E. -E, and that is by Susan Ashcroft. And isn't this just... A great so again if you don't have a ton of one color uh, or if you have like a set of little bats or something or just a bath that wasn't a huge bat um, a great way to stretch it out she used hand spun as her sort of like background color or her contrast color um, but certainly you could use a commercial spun yarn that was a similar weight in a neutral or not a neutral you do you but isn't that gorgeous and like look how pretty it is on the wrong side Right. And so I believe if I'm not, I feel like I have started knitting one of these and then I just didn't have the right combination of yarn. Uh, but I believe it is all just a combination of knit stitches or excuse me, slip stitches that produces that. So yay, isn't that gorgeous? I apologize. My phone is on. I'm waiting for a doctor's phone call. So you might, you're going to hear some alerts. Oh, and so you could, of course, just like any cowl, you could make this whatever you want, but it's great for just under your coat or under a sweater. Just need a little extra warmth. And it is super cozy because, of course, it was made by a friend, which makes, as you know, at least, what are those thermal units they use to measure sleeping pads that you do on the ground? It's more of those. <laughs> This is basically just a giant that's been farmed love fest. So this is the down upstairs downstairs call cowl by Paula Emmons Fiesler. And that pattern is written for DK. This is not a DK yarn. This is more of a sport weight yarn, but it's a cowl. Um, so, and it's available in just like a, as just a one, one, like a tight loop or a big loop, or I think even a medium loop. So probably one that's more like this size. So again, that's the Upstairs Downstairs Cowl by Paula Emmons Feasley. And so these were bats that I spun from Knit Spin Par Farm. I think it was called like, it wasn't called 100 pounds of honey, but maybe 10 pounds of honey. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh! So a great way to use precious bats. And of course you can see like you could even stripe, like if you didn't have, this is a double bat. So I think this is like six ounces. Um, but if you didn't, you could split right there and do one half one color, one half the other, which would be super fun because as you wear it, it would be a fun stripe that would flip flop probably. I might mathematically might be wrong there. So, yeah. And again, hand spun is so great. It's so light and yet so warm. So perfect. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to show you is not made of hand spun, but I think it would be a great project to use hand spun for and I do have a sample of it in non hand spun flat yarn so I'm going to tell it about it now instead of in the next section and that is the vertices unite by Mr. Stephen West oh my gosh don't get in my chai and so this is a pattern that's knit modularly at least that's right right yeah so you knit like a section at a time. And so you can use up little tiny bits of yarn. So there's two sizes in the pattern. It is written for fingering weight. 
I believe both versions are fingering weight. There's just like this size, which is a perfect for your neck, you know, just like, ooh, a spot of color. Like, ooh. Or there's a Gigantor Stephen West size. That's, a, that's an actual size, right? <laughs> but now I'm like, is that one in DK? But I think they're both in fingering. But so this is a great pattern to use up for hand spun because if you just, you know, again, if you had like a sample of something, bam, they should on that little section um, or what have you. Or if you do have full skeins, again, you can still, and this is, a, again, this is fingering weight. So if you knit it in sport or DK, it would still be a pretty reasonable size. It would not get like crazy big. Um, you just might have to adjust how many different times you could use that one skein in here that makes sense like I think there's a b c d e you might have to have g you know f g and h or something if you had if you're using hand spun that was heavier weight um, but a great pattern super fun okay <laughs> okay so now in no particular order um Quaker yarn stretcher by Susan Ashcroft so this is the first one I made Oh wait, I should do that because it's a cowl. Okay, I'm sorry. I lied. Back up. Reverse of Changeo. The Foolproof, which is by Louise Zass Bangham. Now I have given away my hand spun one, which I don't regret. <laughs> so I started another. But this is the one that like got me on the, oh, I had knit this pattern in a commercial, like a Madeline Tosh or something. <clears throat> Excuse me, because it is written so that you can use any size, any, um, any yarn, any weight yarn. That's what I was worried I was looking for. You can use any weight yarn that you need, that you would like, um, because, well, the pattern is just written that way. Not to give away too much. But the reason I realized that I needed it made in hand spun was that Hello Yarn, now not, not that she's the only one who's made it in hand spun, and this is actually not, I don't think this is the first one I saw, but it was the one I could find on Instagram. This has been like years ago. It's still in my head. Ah, oh, right. Oh. <gasps> How stinking gorgeous is that nonsense? So the one I knit was a traditional two ply that I actually used, I think I used a patchwork kit for it, which is just like little odds and ends of fiber that she puts, that Hello Yarn puts together uh, because she likes the colors together. But you could do it with anything. You could just take off bits and bobs or you know, you could take two ounce bumps and just combine them or whatever. Um, this one and the one I made were, I think this is a two ply. I shouldn't say that. I don't really know, but they're not, it doesn't look like it's chain plied is what I was trying to say. Um, but of course, if you'd want to do chain ply, it would just like those stripes would just show up more. Pa -pa. Um, but I really, I love this. I actually really prefer this cowl in a heavier weight. The one that I have that's fingering weight, I don't know if I just kind of knit it a little bit loose, um, but it's very flaccid. It just like, but because it's so like, it doesn't have a lot of like physical structure to it. It just, it just tends to get kind of like wadded up. And so then it feels like it's wrinkly. Maybe it's just in my head, but I really do actually prefer this pattern in a thicker yarn. Um, so the one I made was probably, again, a Sport DK. This one is probably a Sport DK. <laughs> and I love that because um, it's just, it's squishy and it feels very cozy. But again, it's still lightweight. It has a fun amount of color. You know, you can do whatever you're comfortable with color wise. But since it's an accessory, it doesn't feel like it needs to match anything else you're wearing. And so the one that I gave away was actually lots of pinks, which I usually don't gravitate to, but I loved it. Um, so that's again, the Foolproof by Louise Zass Bangham. Okay, now we'll do shots. So the next one is the Quaker Yarn Stretcher by Susan Ashcroft. And this is just... It's written for hand spun, as in literally written for hand spun. She gives you um, tips about how to get use every little last bit. So when I'm looking for patterns for hand spun, 
I usually do want to try to maximize how much of the hand spun I'm using. So something that has um, a percentage system telling you what percentage of yarn you need for your bind off or like what percentage of yarn you need for an applied bind off or for the last section or whatever are ideal. And this Quaker Yarn Stretcher definitely gets good mileage. Now the pattern is written for a four ounce bump of hand spun. Um, and this is eight, but I am twice as big as you probably. So I need twice as much. And right, like again, not my normal colors at all. I, th I think this is actually spun right round, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but I just find it to be endlessly useful. It's a perfect, it never gets so thick that like it kind of wants to not go over shoulder or does want to go over shoulder. Um, but it just stays in place beautifully. It's a nice amount of color and texture. Um, and it's super pleasant to knit because you never have a giant, um, a giantly wide row. Oh, mine has a hole in it. <gasps> My precious. All right, it just needs to be mended. Do you give me, do you see me giving, giving Gus some side eye? I don't think he actually chewed it. I think it's probably been caught on something. Or perhaps a little niece found it. No, she would have done more damage. <laughs> um, oh, but because of the, the way it's written, you know, your longest row is still not that crazy long. I mean, it's got some width, length to it, but it never feels like one of those, like, semicircular final rows where you're like, oh, sweet goodness. End me now. So there it is in some like nice soft muted colors and then here it is. I think this actually might also be spun right round. I think it is. <laughs> so here it is in a brighter palette. And again, this is also an eight ounce bump. Did I say that it's DK? It probably always is unless I say otherwise. But yeah, this is about a DK and I, I believe that the yarn treasure is written with DK in mind. Um, and it's knit at a fairly loose gauge so that you get more mileage out of your yarn. What else? Um, yeah. It's a good, it's good stuff. Highly enjoyable. So both of the Quaker Yarn Stretchers are traditional two plies. Okay, so then, kind of along that shape line, and I apologize, many of these are a bit crumpled because it's not been accessory weather, wool accessory weather yet. But this is um, a hitchhiker. And the hitchhiker, of course, is by Martina Bem. This is a Hello Yarn patch work kit that is chain plied and again is in like a DK weight. Um, but I love it in this. I've tried to knit a hitchhiker in, I believe it's written for fingering weight, yes? And it was just, it was not pleasant for me. <laughs> I did not enjoy it at all. But I loved knitting it in the hand spun. Again, you get those fun color changes. And I just really dig how it turned out. Again, since it's the very shallow, you can just basically wear it like a scarf. You don't have to worry about where the, the triangle part is gonna lay. It just sits right on your neck, doesn't move, hangs out nice and behaves well. And again, you have the fun little sawtooth that just kind of visits you, just says howdy. So again, that's the Hitchhiker by Martina Bem. I would definitely knit that again. I would knit all of these again. <laughs> okay, so then I have... This is the Ellison Bay by Paula Emmons Feasley. I'm probably gonna show you the, oh, right, that's right. And so this is, again, this is an eight ounce bump of just a traditional two ply. And I apologize, I can't remember who this dyer is, but isn't it just lovely? And so it's a crescent shaped shawl with just a very simple um, cable rib edging. Sorry, I could not think of that word. Um, but yeah, it looks beautiful and hand spun. 
So again, that's Ellison Bay by Paula Emmons Feasley. And then this is the, pow, pow, for, for a slight color change in our palette. <laughs> this is the Passy Unk Square. So it's P-A-S-S-Y-U-N-K Square by Erica, really, Amy, what did you, I just wrote her last name like I wasn't going to have to read it in front of you. It's Erica with a K, Flory. I really should not be allowed to to do these things. Did I say thank you enough to the Patreon and PayPal supporters of the show? Thank you. Erica Flory. So there it is. You can, you know, you can decide which way is the up, the down, the sideways, the top, but I like this as the top. And it's again, it's another easy one that just you start here and you keep going. So you get lots of fun striping. This one, the bind off row is, is again, a little bit longer, but it's not crazy. It's like less than if it were a regular shawl, right? And you were doing the whole triangle. This is just the one side of it. So, all right. And this yarn, do you love it? This is Moon Rover in her Luna Moth colorway. I don't think Moon River does fiber anymore. I don't think Moon River's dying anymore, which is horribly sad because she makes beautiful yarn and fiber. But isn't it beautiful? Now, this is a traditional two-ply, but I did sort of try to keep it matched up. I think I just split the braid in half and, and just did like, um, like, oh, like fan out the braid of fiber and split it this way. Not like split it in half in the middle and break it apart. Like split the length in half. Um, so it does have points where the colors match up nicely. If I were a really great spinner, they would match up everywhere, but I'm not. It's so distracting because this <laughs> behind me, like I keep thinking I have like a giant scrunchie on my ponytail. <laughs> I don't know why it's so distracting to me, but it is. just gorgeous. Again, not my normal color palette, but I dig it. Right? <laughs> You're the fanciest. Yes, you are. Okay, and then the last shawl, yes, is um, another example of how you can get away with using, or how you can use, get away with, <laughs> just get away with it being so naughty. Uh, but how you can stretch your hand spun uh, by using it with a commercial yarn. And so this is the Stripe Study, which is by Vera Valamaki. And so it's an asymmetrical triangle. And the green is spinach souffle. I think it was fat cat knits, but I could be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong. <coughs> if I am, feel free to correct me. Correct me. Um, anyway, the colorway was definitely called spinach souffle. And then the commercial yarn is Swan's Island Sport. It's Rambouillet. And I don't think they make it anymore. I think they only make a hand dyed version of it, which is a shame because I wish I had bought all of it in the entire world. It's super favorite-y. <sighs> It's woolen spun, it's rambouillet, it's squishy, it's perfect in this color. Yeah. It's ochre, I'm pretty sure. But so anyway, so you can use it with, so that way you get like the big board, you know, the big border which takes up so much yarn. You can get away with using a commercial and really stretch. And again, this is definitely like a, at least six ounce, I think she sold like six, like, I think she sold them in increments of two ounces. So this is either six ounces or eight ounces of the, the, the hand spun. And this pattern, I think, is written for fingering. And this is definitely like a sport to DK, but probably more of a sport. But I love it. When I first made it, I was not sure about this asymmetrical triangle. Like, I had strong feelings about maybe how I'm so sad that I had used my beautiful hand spun and this beautiful flippin' Swan's Island. Ugh, now I love it. Super mega love it. 
it's just enough it sits on the shoulder that little short end just stays right against your chest you don't have to worry about another end flipping flapping around <sighs> I'm getting a little <coughs> it's so, hard. so yeah stripe study fear of Alamaki. okay so that's all the shawls I have to show you and then I have a rather epic project to show you um, that was in fact pictured with the designer the very fabulous Mr. Stephen West. I'm not kidding you. So this <laughs> is my, oh my gosh, what's this stupid thing called? I did write it down. It's my excuse me poncho and it's A-S. K E W S, like S S S Q. It's because it has this fabulous right. So the hand spun is Hello Yarn, traditional two ply, and then the background color is Rowan worsted weight, which like they're just like their most generic Liberty wool. Is that what it's? I think it's Liberty wool. Um. So here's the inside. And the original pattern looked very funnily and I get a little bit like that lady hot with stuff around my neck. So I did put myself a little like <laughs> a little parachute in there, a little like, okay. So I have like a little toggle button in case I don't want to have it up that close to my neck. I can have it flipped down and it makes it just like a and this is an awesome cowl, I mean poncho, for when you're at home and your heater is not doing what it needs to do. You can rotate it a little bit so that the higher part comes up and then you can just like tuck it under your glasses. How do I know? Because I've had to do it. Right? Or if you're not, <laughs> if you're not freezing, you can flip it down. And because of the, um, the the brioche increase line it wants it does sit quite nicely on your shoulders and I have no trouble with like freedom of movement and it's all around pretty excellent and again just saying I have a picture of this stupid West in it. okay sorry I had to come back for a battery change so that's the Excuse Me Poncho again by Mr. Stephen West. And of course, recently I finished the Mag... Oops, sorry, guys. Sorry, buddy. Magpie Tendency, which is by Melissa Alexander Loomis. And that's a great pattern if you just have, like, one... <laughs> it's also nice if you show it right side out instead of inside out. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> so it's a great pattern if you just have a perfect skein of fingering weight. Um hand spun and then it's so fun to match a commercial yarn to it because there's you know it's usually pretty easy to find a commercial yarn that's going to be um really good it's just like wallowing in the pile of hand spuns <laughs> but so again i am a size 56 inch bust and i was able to eke it out with one skein so how fun is that and then the last thing i have to show you is a hero sweater and this is the H-I-R-O Hero uh, by Julia Farwell Clay. And so really, I mean, any sweater pattern that you use, I mean, any sweater pattern is great for hand spun. If you have like a, I have a big hunk of hand spun that's color, like variegated that I want to use a sweater pattern for. <clears throat> and so I find that, I find those to be most attractive to me. Again, everything is your own aesthetic. But I really love the um, the variegated hand spun, whether it's done in a fade or what I really like is when Paper Dag on Instagram had a hand spun sweater. I believe hers was a cardigan, if I'm not mistaken. And she did like what looked like two rows um, from different ends of the skein or from different balls or what have you. So it really helped with the, it never felt like like there was always a change in the color, right? Like, so it was like striped, just like the, um, 
the three the three ply two ways that Joanna Spring does for her socks, and then I have that. I'm sorry, Gus. Gus is not happy that I am disturbing his handspun bed. Okay, I can't find it now. But you know what I mean? Like it stripes. Uh, so it's still the same colorway, but it's, it's again, it's a stripe in terms of like a three ply chain ply versus a three ply marl. But it looks very similar to even if they're both a two ply, a traditional two ply, or both a traditional three ply. Um, and they're just stripped from different ends of the ball. So those are really cool. But if you just have like one skein of variegated or, you know, here and there, then this sweater, the Hero, the body of this is a hand spun CVM that was prepared top or prepared roving. It wasn't top. It's like the day of finding tiny holes. <laughs> so this is hand spun just as a natural color. But then the hero, I think, uses three contrasting colors in the yoke. I could be wrong on that. I apologize. Uh, but you basically kind of just snowflake them together. They just speckle into each other, like a speckly fade almost. Um, and so it's a great way to use hand spuns that kind of are in the same neighborhood, but might not have enough contrast to do color work with. Um, or that you're afraid of doing a lot of color work with because they're heavier yarns. Like again, I think the Hero is a DK or a worsted. I'm not sure, I apologize. Um, but there are not as many color work. I'm doing this for color work now, apparently. This is the new sign for color work. Um, there are not as many color work rows, so it doesn't feel as bulky, uh, to me anyway. But I don't know, I like it. It's short sleeve because I dig short sleeve words rate sweaters. Okay, okay. So again, that is The Hero by Julia Farwell Clay. So then a very brief section um, on what I think would be awesome to knit with hand spun. So I have not knit any of them yet, but the shift series from Andrea Mowry. So there's the shift, the night shift, and then there's even a sweater, right? Which is kind of crappy. Um, those look gorgeous and hand spun. Um, Yarn Hoarder on Instagram, I think did the night shift if I'm not mistaken. And it is gorgeous balls. It's so pretty. Of course, Amber is a lovely human being, but she also did, oh my gosh, did you see the hand spun blanket? She did a crochet hand spun blanket and it is bonkersly gorgeous. Bonkers. And it's huge, by the way. FYI, it's huge. It's not like a baby blanket. It's enormous. How cool is that? She's super fancy. But, um, But anyway, so she did, I think again, I think it was the night shift. I should not try to find it while we're talking to each other. There it is. I found it. Hush. Right. Oh my gosh. Did your brain just explode a little bit? It is amazingly gorgeous. But anyway, so any of those, you know, those patterns that are coming out now that are, that are highlighting like the spin cycle yarns, which are gorgeous, but a little bit out of my personal comfort zone. And again, I do, I spin. So, um, but the, I meant price wise. But all of those patterns are perfect for hand spun because spin cycle really does mimic the look of hand spun. Um, of course, also Noro. I mean, Noro doesn't look mimic the look of hand spun per se, but it has like the longer color changes and stuff. So if you're trying to look for inspiration, um, I find looking for patterns that are knit with Noro also to be helpful. Um, and then again, another thing that I find helpful is when it's a weighable shawl. So the Yowza Weigh It Shawls by Susan B. Anderson, um, there's three of them. There's like a traditional triangle, an elongated triangle, and then a, a crescent, I think. I apologize if I'm not correct. Uh, but they are three. She So she specifically wrote them for Yauza, which is a DK, which is like a double, like 400 something yards, I think. Um, but she specifically has written those patterns so that you weigh the yarn. So you complete this section until you have 30% of your yarn left and then you go on 
to knit the border. Now that's a little bit like less precise when you're doing hand spun unless you're amazing. Um, so I tend to give myself a little bit more wiggle room or like a back door if I need to bind off sooner um, because you know, just with natural, like the beginning of my hand spun is not going to be the exact same wraps print as the end of my hand spun. And so, you know, even though it might say 30% of the yarn, that's 30% of a commercial consistent yarn, not necessarily of my wonky hand spun. So I cannot tell you how happy Gus is. Okay, but don't chew anything. You can lay in it, but you're not allowed to just chew it. He's like, hmm, you know, mom. Anyway, <laughs> so those are options. And so then in the next section, I'm going to look at how to use Ravelry to find projects that are knit with hand spun. Okay, so here we are on Ravelry. And the first thing I'm going to show you is, for example, if you are looking for a pattern, for, for example, if you're like, oh, that foolproof thing looks pretty interesting to me. I don't know what I just typed. <laughs> But you go to the pattern and then you want to see projects so you click on the projects and then at the bottom if you're interested in looking for hand spun you'll see right here that there are a hundred hand spun projects for this particular um, pattern so as you can see this looks great in hand spun so that's a quick easy way to look for a specific pattern how that is going to look in hand spun if, however, you're just kind of looking for general inspiration, like I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't know what weight yarn I have. I just want to make something. Now, there may be a more efficient way to do this. I apologize if I am not giving you the most efficient way to do it. But um, as you can see, in, if you just go to patterns, just the general patterns queue, um, this is on an iPad, so but it'll be similar. You go to projects and what that does as you can see it takes a lot of load because it's giving you all of the projects that have been posted and this one is listed by recently completed so what I tend to like to do is click on finished and yes I want a photo so I don't want to have any of these in here and then what you can do is go down to like the more search options and you can see right here oops not there hand spun and it, a filter by hands but that's just because i am on ipad that wants to tell me that ah, you're getting all of the stuff ah and then again you can do recently completed whatever you want to you know sort yourself by um, you know, that way you can also, you know, you can use all of your regular filters here if you want to say, well, I definitely have DK. I want to know all of the DK things that have been posted or I want a, a, a clothing or what have you, accessory. I want accessory or clothing or hat or shocks or whatever. Shocks? Sometimes we call that socks. Um, but so that is a great way to, I mean, look at that. I'm sorry, I'm pointing and you can't see me. Look at this, ik, suk, like, look at that. How gorgeous is that nonsense? I apologize, I'm getting a little sneezy. But um, so that is a great way if you're just looking for general um, inspiration. Of course, there are lots of hand spun groups and spinning groups on Ravelry. I don't know much about any of them because I don't tend to do a lot of Ravelry forums, but that's also obviously a great place to look, as is Instagram. You can follow hashtags knitting with hand spun or hashtag hand spun. I'm sure there are more, but those are the two that I happen to follow. Ah, of course. Cute little baby surprise jacket. Perfect use for hand spun. Um, so anyway, so yeah, just thought I would show you that as well. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and talking about hand spun. Okay, so hopefully that went well. I've never done a Ravelry thing before. But anyway, I hope you found it useful, and I really appreciate you hanging out, and I'll talk next time.